Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Stephanie Seacoast. Now to give you an idea of just how bad the damage is, I'm about five foot four and the crack is about as tall as I am. No, and I mean rain's certainly not nearly as bad as a bunch of mice running around, so let's take the rain instead. That's much better. No, We're competitive, I think, just by nature, by nature. but there's, there's, it's not a competition. Mm. Everyone wins. This is the original staircase. Any repairs that need to be done in the dome, you have to climb up here and keep on climbing. With the weekends, I'm used to sleeping yes. in and not coming in until 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So this was a really big change <laughs> coming in at 4 a.m. I think I'm looking at the camera, but honestly, I have no idea. How about we trade jobs here? You become the reporter, I'll become the driver, and I'll uh, give this a go. We begin tonight with some breaking news out of the Verdon area. A tornado touched down tonight near Scarth. Witnesses say two vehicles were thrown from the highway, and the twister also hit a farmyard. Verdon, Manitoba with a big time tornado here. Just crossed the road. Environment Canada says the tornado hit around 8 this evening. Damaging winds, heavy rainfall and hail were also tracked through the area as the storm rolled through. Stars Air Ambulance was dispatched for a call in the area tonight. Hundreds of people are without power tonight as well as the storm knocked down power lines. Merrily, officials say paramedics pulled over to help a man who appeared to be in distress and seconds later the man hopped in and drove off. It's certainly not something you see every day. A naked man getting into an ambulance and then driving away. Well, we, we jumped out of the way. We, we got out of the way. Oh, yeah, because he was coming down the wrong way and he was coming right at us. The ambulance eventually crashed into the Portuguese Cultural Center on Young Street. The incident began around 8.30 Friday morning near Health Sciences Center. Fire Chief John Lane says two paramedics were on their way to another station to pick up supplies when they came across a man who appeared to be in distress. It deteriorated within 70 seconds, uh, within a minute and 10 seconds of them encountering this individual on the street. Officials say the man was acting violent and threatening the paramedics who quickly alerted police. They, they did feel threatened at some point when uh, the patient or, or the male that they were attempting to help uh, use some type of a large device or, or large uh, container on scene to, to, uh, to come at them. Paramedics Union President Ryan Woyden says there are safeguards in place to prevent thefts like this, but the unusual situation unfolded so quickly. Dean Jorgensen and Sean Flett were busy working when they saw an ambulance coming right at them. Broke right through our signage, everything that we had on the sidewalk to block pedestrians from our work. Took out the signage. Flett says the crash didn't happen then. He says the ambulance took off only to come back, veering to miss a garbage truck and then crashing into the building. It's a good thing that he didn't actually, you know, had the sirens on and didn't have them off and we would have noticed. Oh, we would have never been allowed what would happen. Then. But we don't like to think about what couldn't have happened or could have happened, right? Police say the man was detained and then taken to hospital where at last check he remains. No one else was injured in this incident. Fire Chief John Lane says the paramedics were shaken and have been offered supports. Stephanie, I got to ask, do we know whether or not meth played a role in this? Merrily, it's still too early to say officials weren't able to confirm whether meth or any other substances were involved. That's right. Shortly before the rescue, I was speaking with Carol Battenchuk, whose three daughters were part of the missing group. She was telling me how worried she was, but then she got a call that changed everything. Days of heartache for a Manitoba mother. Three of Carol Battenchuk's daughters lost on Lake Winnipeg. I don't even know how to describe it. It's... I don't know. Very hard. So many thoughts going through my head. Badenchuk says her daughters Twyla, Ashley, and Natasha set out on a journey Friday night with their cousin Stuart and his girlfriend Sadie. RCMP say the five left from the Pine Dock area at 7.30 p.m. by boat. They were expected to land in Poplar River a few hours later, but never arrived. Badenchuk says the family started searching that night and into Saturday. When there was still no sign of them, they called police. The search scoured water, land, and air. RCMP say several boats, float planes, and helicopters were deployed. CFB Trenton also assisted with a Hercules plane. Close to three days after the group went missing, a call that would change everything. 
A relative helping with the search found all five on George Island, not far from Poplar River, safe and in good spirits. The news bringing hugs, cheers, and happy tears all around. So relieved. Thank God. They're okay. I just can't wait to see them now. I need to see them, but it's so relieved. The first thing Badenchuk wants to do when she sees her kids. Oh, just hug them. How much I love them. I'm glad they're safe. There are still many unknowns surrounding how the group became stranded and how they managed to survive. Badenchuk says they were taken to Poplar River this afternoon to be looked over by doctors. Stephanie, do we know when they'll be reunited with family? Well, Batonchuk is hoping she'll be able to see her girls as early as tomorrow, but there still is no time set. Sandy, we're seeing a record number of hospitalizations here in Manitoba. The province reporting today 288 people in hospital with 52 in intensive care. We saw another deadly day here in Manitoba as well with 12 more deaths all in Winnipeg. The youngest victim today being a man in his 40s. Our case numbers were lower though than they have been in recent weeks. Manitoba has been under tighter restrictions now for about a week and a half. And on Friday, the province announced tighter restrictions on what you can buy in store, allowing for the sale of essential goods only. However, this weekend, they did update that list to include gift cards, prepaid credit cards, and newspapers. On Tuesday, Manitoba's largest rural school division will move to remote learning. Children of frontline workers, though, will still be able to attend in class. The 28 schools are in a region in the province where up to 40% of people are testing positive. Sandy. One high five at a time, a group of Winnipeggers is attempting to break a Guinness World Record. The idea started after a national high five day initiative last year. Everybody wrote down things that were good about other people in the company on these hands that were cut out and we put them on the wall. Over the last two months, employees at Johnston Group used their lunch breaks to practice the fine art of high fiving. It took us a while to get a technique. and. We realized, okay, what, how can we be faster? So then the next time would be, okay, we should be doing this. All that hard work led to Thursday, and they were off again for a shot at the title. On your marks. Get set. The Guinness World Record for most high fives in a three-minute relay was set in July 2017 in London, England. The record set that day, 492. The team of 33 ran around for a third time, hoping to come out on top. As the clock ticks down, the group gathers around the counters one more time to find out their final tally. On our last attempt for the day, we have just set the world record! The final number, 509. <laughs> Stephanie Seco, CTV News, Winnipeg.